So this one particular thing that I want to really focus on is whaling. It's a uh, so serious thing that scholars have written so much about it. We, we need to touch up a little bit on this. This hadith that I put up here. It's basically a serious sin. And in another hadith it says that it's an act of disbelief. And if you do that, you have... And there's two problems here. One is that you are getting the punishment on the Day of Judgment. And the other problem is that the person for whom you're crying, the deceased person, he is going to be in trouble for that. He is going to be in torment. This hadith, a dead person is punished in his grave because of his family crying over him. Actually, it's not the punished is not the right translation. It's the right word is torment. Torment. Um, it's not that he will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or something. No, it's not. It's just because, like, if he dies, right, people are wailing. Uh, he will come to know of that. He, he will know that people are wailing for me. And that will upset him so much. And we discussed later on that, that when the soul is about to come out before the angels come, it's, he is, will be in such a stress, difficult moment. He's already worried. And when people wail, that's, like, very, very difficult for him. It's like almost a punishment. And they, they, some Sahaba took it literally. They're like, it, really, it's a punishment. But uh, say that the Aisha of the Allah said that you know, uh, it's it's just uh, you know a torment. That just like when we say there's another hadith which says that a travel is a torment. Travel is a torment. It's not like it's a punishment from Allah, but it's just that people get exhausted. They are in a very difficult situation when they are traveling, especially in old days. So that's a similar word that's used in the hadith that a travel is a torment. And wailing, if, if you want to know the exact definition of wailing, it's, you know, when we say crying, it's like different levels. So when your crying exceeds the level of moderateness, right? Basically, it is accompanied with like screaming and, you know, some people even go to the extent of tearing clothes and so on. That is wailing, crying with loud vo voices and so on. Uh, a little bit weeping and, you know, tears falling down, that's fine. But when you have that loud, loud voice with you, that, that comes under the category of wailing. And uh, again, uh, you know, uh, there is that Quranic verse that you know that no soul will bear a burden of another soul. So people might say, hey, what did I do? They are crying and why should I be in trouble? You know, it's, so it's not that that person will be punished for their sins. It's just the way it is, the human nature. Even though a person is dead, that wailing sounds or whatever, we don't know about that world, but that, that news will reach him and it will be very difficult for him to bear that. So, and we basically have to stop. Uh, if we see something like that, we should stop it. You know, it's because we know it's such a serious sin. And do it kindly. Of course, that person is going to be in a very difficult situation. Be very kind to him and say, you know, it's going to be a problem. The, for the one that you're crying for, it's going to be difficult if you will like this. So we should stop about, uh, from that. And actually, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when women used to accept Islam, he used to take covenant, a pledge from him that they, they will not wail, they will not scream when somebody dies. And uh, another hadith it says that if a woman does that, specifically mentioned for women because they are the ones who have soft heart, it's very uh, easy for them. It's not easy to control their emotions. So uh, that hadith it specifically mentions that a, a woman who dies like that, it's like she will be. Uh, given a shirt of scabies on the day of judgment scabies is like you know it's like a woman uh, who has a skin disease you know it's like itchy uh, feeling that they have that's the kind of clothes that you know that person will be uh, given on the day of judgment and hadith from Sahih Muslim it says that you know I'm surprised it's, it says that this is one of the practices that our ummah will never drop until the day of judgment so there are some special ruling when it comes to women. Um, their mo their mourning, their uh, uh, it's called in Arabic it's called hidad. So there are two different categories here. 
a person can be a general relative, a father or a son, or a husband though, the, who died. There are different rulings that we need to be aware of. The three days that I said that applies to women as well, but only for a relative. But when it comes to husband, there is a different rule altogether. That rule is four months and ten days. Four months and ten days. In, in Arabic, it's also called idda, the idda period, the waiting period. So, uh, when we say mourning, it's basically two things. One is physical and the other one is emotional. Right? So, emotional, it's natural. You, know, it does, you don't have to like, uh, force yourself to cry if it is not natural. So, but it cannot exceed that time limit, four months and ten days. Some, some women might not uh, mourn for, uh, I mean, emotionally they won't feel that, you know, uh, hurt <coughs> by that. But that, that's the limit. And if somebody loved her, their husband so much, then um, they cannot cross this limit, four months and ten days. And there are a few things that they are not allowed to do. Uh, they cannot wear perfume even if they are staying at home obviously outside they cannot wear use perfume and also makeup and eyelining and all, all the other <coughs> stuff they are not allowed to and by the way in Islam after like you cross this four months and ten days limit it is allowed for a widow to use makeup that's fine absolutely fine there is some cultures uh, you know they prohibit second marriage and no jewelry, nothing. That's in, in Islam. It's allowed. It's no problem with that, as long as this duration of four months and ten days is met. And also wearing jewelry, that's fine. And the whole point, uh, the scholars try to say, why are these restrictions there, and why is it different for a woman? Why four months ten days and not just three days? Again, uh, why? If you look at the emotional reason, that's quite obvious because a, a, a woman, she needs some time, more than three days, that, that because of that love. That's very close one, the closest person in her life. And if, uh, you know, and obviously the woman, they have a softer heart than a man. So, and by the way, this doesn't apply the other way around. A husband cannot be for like four, hundred, four, four months and ten days. That only applies to women. And, but, but physically, you know, these restrictions that we have, it's not just a recommendation, but it's not allowed for a woman to do these things. Physically, why? Because the whole point here is that, uh, you know, if uh, that woman, if she is pregnant, that becomes apparent in that idda period, four months and ten days. That's the whole point. So that's why she should not, she cannot marry. She she cannot marry in those ten days, uh, four four months and ten days. Can't can't say like, after two months I want to marry. I I'm feeling very lonely. I have to marry somebody else. No, she can't. She has to wait full, four months and ten days. And so that's why she cannot be uh, uh, wear attractive clothing and so on, so that people don't propose her. And even men are not allowed to propose such women. They have to wait. If they like somebody, they want to marry. And if they are in that period, they have to wait. It's not allowed. And, uh, and and for men actually, um, okay, is, is it allowed if I like my loved one died, and can I go the second day, for example, my job? It is okay, or do I have to wait three days? It is absolutely fine. We can go to job next day. We don't have to. some people in some cultures. They are like, I cannot work for seven days. No, it's just the maximum limit three days. If you want to go the same day work, that's fine. If you don't need to take a break emotionally, you're fine, that's fine. But it is a bidder actually, it's an innovation that people fix these days, like it's seven full days. And another very important thing is that uh, the, she cannot leave house. Uh, if there, there are exceptions, of course, if, like, if she has to um, you know, take care of the children, make a living, then she of course can go out, scholars gave that exception. And if she can also go and buy groceries if needs be, but if there is no need, she should not leave the house unnecessary reason. And Prophet Muhammad said that mourning is not man's practice. And um, it is a sinful innovation that should be avoided. Grieving, however, is okay. <coughs>